this is the this is the aftermath this is the aftermath of the Ixlon mass opening that I did okay it wasn't really mass opening I wasn't really opening like a case of booster boxes but you, you gotta admit for the for the player who doesn't play a lot this is a lot of stuff to open one one booster what you you saw the video it's like almost two hours long it's the longest video I ever posted on YouTube if you want go ahead and check that out I appreciate it um, you can see my reactions to pulling what I did pull Arg one I Mitch here and today we're gonna be going uh, well okay I'm cutting out the pirate stuff Arg so after that craziness yesterday of unboxing so many things it was uh that day was release day so i got back from the release no okay arc so timeline friday was when they released it and that's when i got the booster box and everything friday night i opened and record and then saturday i had the pre-release so i couldn't edit it until after that or not pre-release the actual game day release and that's when I uh, uh, that's why I put together the first part so here's the day after and I posted the part one video so if you want to check out part one go right ahead part one's basically the bulk of unboxing and stuff but in this video I also got uh, from that pre-release or not pre-release game day from game or not game day release day from the release day, I got another pre-release pack, which I um, opened because I played, and I did kind of well compared to my other ones, so I'm going to talk about that later on. And I also got, uh, from that thing, even though I didn't place or win anything, really, I got a couple free boosters and, re well, two free boosters and a... Uh, standard showdown uh, booster pack I have no idea what's in it so I'm gonna find that out probably near the end of the video and uh, let me uh, show you what I got boom 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 traveling okay so after uh, opening everything I uh, off camera I sorted everything so, um, we'll start off with, you, you recognize this pile. Uh, the only difference is I forgot to show, I got during open house, which was like a week before or whatever, I got the Walk the Plank, uh, promo card. Really awesome art, love it. Uh, I, I wish I had a second one. Um, I might try and get a second one in the future, but for now I only got that one. Uh, but if not, I got, I think I got a couple of, uh, Walk the Plank as, uh, Uncommon, so that's good. Uh, overall from all my un unpackaging. And, um, yeah, so here is the two boosters I got for free. The Standard Showdown booster and the promo, which is the Bishop of Rebirth. I love that promo. I love that promo. I, I think it's great, and uh, uh, Bishop of Rebirth, I think, is a really good card. Um, even though it is five costs, um, but, you know, free four vigilance, I think, I, I think it's, it's, it's very beneficial, especially for our vampire deck. So, I, I think I have three of them now. This is my third one, the promo. Yeah, so here is X-Line Commons, the Uncommons, and the Rares, slash Foils that I got. Uh, River Hoopoo, what are you doing in there? You think you think you can sneak in to x -Line? I'm sorry, but you are a bird out of water, River Hoopoo. Or, my mistake, Foiled River Hoopoo. So, you go back to the Hour of Devastation and enjoy your bloodbath, okay? Anyways, yeah, and then over here, I got more of the commons. I didn't really want to stack on top of the other ones, but there's more commons. And then I, I sorted out the tokens. Those are all the tokens I got, as you can see. 
I got, I think I got like 60 of the treasure tokens. Um, the low, low end uh, plant, I think got four. Illusion, I got free, free illusions, and four or five, no, I actually got a decent amount of merfolk. I got like six, six or eight merfolk. And then the dinosaur guy, I got like five, five or six. So, yeah, the most tokens, vampire, and the uh, treasure tokens are the most I got. Thought that was interesting. Uh, pirate, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, it's around five or six. So that's just interesting how level the Merfolk Pirate and Dinosaur is and Plant and Illusion I think are the more uncommon or rare tokens. Um, no Jace. I, I didn't see a Jace token anywhere. I couldn't find I, I don't even think it exists in the set. I don't I don't think there is a Jace token. Which is kind of unfortunate, uh, because you know, when you have a planeswalker card that um, multiplies and copies itself and turns into a Jace token that's not legend or that's <laughs> that's non legendary. So it's like that was an opportunity. That was a missed opportunity for wizards to do something with that. But um, unless it's super rare, I don't know. Or maybe it's a promo that you have to win. Either way, that would that would be interesting what they do with that if they even do do token for Jace. Here it is, Jace. Uh, he's in my mythic pile. Once again, if you saw the video, you know what mythics I got and which ones I didn't. Um, yeah, because he creates two tokens of himself. So, so my theory is, if uh, since there's no token of Jace in the set, from what I can tell. I think the next set's gonna have a Jace token, another Jace token, uh, and in that set there will be another version of Jace. That's my theory. Uh, because what better way to uh, use the new uh, Planeswalker rule than to add another version of this Planeswalker in that set? And I wonder if they're gonna do that with the uh, other two, which is the Veraska and the um, Hatari. Hata I'm gonna call her Hatari. <laughs> you know the old John Wayne film, or whatever Hatari means. I'm sure it's a word that it. I'm sure it wasn't made for that movie, but that's the only thing I can think of with Hatari. I also wanted to show you what I got. Uh, release wise so from my pre-release pack I said I got a, another chromatic compass um, I used it and then uh, this is my promo my promo was the Shaper's Sanctuary which is kind of ironic that this was the first card I see opening up uh, the day after because the last card I opened I think on my booster box was this rare so I just thought it was ironic that this was the first card I saw the next day. Um, and it was the promo. I'll put that in the rare slot. There you go. Okay. And then I got Sunbirds. Sunburn? Sunbird, <laughs> Sunbirds Invocation. That really long text. Um, I think it's a really neat card. I definitely would love to try and build a deck around this. I got like two of them. So... Cool. I thought it was cool. Um, I think this is either my first or second time getting the Marauders. So, another pirate. I'm happy there. If a source you control would deal damage with a permanent player, it deals double that damage. It's just kind of a large casting cost, but that ability kind of makes it worth it if it pays off. Uh, boom, boom, boom. And then uh, we got this guy again. Really. I kind of want to try him in limited, but I just, it's just something about giving your opponent a basic land card from their deck. That's the only problem. I'm like, I'm like, it's, if it was a one cost 4-4 four, four for that price, maybe, but I, I'm still kind of considering it with free free, but I think it's kind of bad. Like, 
short term game, long term horrible. Like, I don't know. I kind of want to try this card, kind of don't want to try this card. Maybe for fun, I'll try a deck with like four of these, you know, see how effective it is. Give the opponent four lands by turn. <laughs> wow. Give them four lands. Uh, yeah, it enters the battlefield tap. So logically, if you had four of these in your opening hand and you played by turn four, you played all four, you, your opponent would have eight lands on the battlefield. Eight. Turn eight. Uh, eight lands. Like, yeah, I don't see that being beneficial as much. Okay, so put that green rare. And then I got a foil island. Huzzah. I mean, it's a beautiful island. Love it. Love it a lot. Beautiful. Uh, where's my... Uh, yeah, I... Sun, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out to get rid of my sun petal groove. Maybe I'll trade it with someone for another promo or something. Uh, once again, I only like the blue black lands, hence why there's this pile here, which is the pile of the cards I got on release day that I bought. Uh, not release, yeah, release day. Yeah, I bought two of them because I had two of them, so. Now I got a play set of these, so I'm probably for standard. I'm definitely going to be trying to build the best blue-black deck that I can possibly build. It's definitely going to be Pirate, and it's going to be this is going to be the star of the show right here, because I bought two of them, Dead-Eyed Plunderers. So now I have a play set of Dead-Eyed Pl Plunderers. Um, so hard to find like the store only had two of these i don't know how many boxes they opened but they only had two of these so and i only got two from all the ones i opened so i it's, it's quite rare this common and i can't believe it so i'm definitely going to be playing with this uh two of them and then i got a uh, hostage taker i think yeah i got one of them so I bought another, and then I found another store which had a promo version for sale. And I was like, yeah, pirate promo, I'll buy it. Yeah, so I got the promo version of it. Kind of wish I got this for a promo instead of having to buy it, but oh well. Now I got three of them. I don't know if I'll use all three in the deck. I'll probably at the very least use two. Um, do do do. Uh, put the drowned cans in the island section. Yeah. Yeah. So I I really want to win. I really want to win. Like my goal is I'm gonna try my best to win the Ixlon game day and you know what the odds are totally stacked against me at the very least like the the best possible outcome is if i win game day get the mat or whatever they have um i would probably like if i got the mat i would hang it on the wall like a trophy uh yeah it's just <laughs> I'm not that good at magic, so the uh, the chances of me winning are like 0 0.01, and so I don't think it's going to happen, but at the very least, I want to try and get top 8 and stay in top 8. I, I have entered top 8, but then got knocked out, so if I can get in top 8 and stay in top 8, I'll be, ha I'll be a happy camper, at the very least. So... That brings me to the obvious, um, the most obvious lack of Veraska in the room. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get her at all. Um, I'm glad I got the mythics that I did, but you know, I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm not gonna, you know, buy a ton of boosters hoping to get her. I'm just probably gonna find the card and and buy it. Which brings me to my thing is like, should I, because I, I was thinking about it, I haven't begun building, as you can see, my standard deck, but um, I'm thinking blue-black, and 
since it's a treasure deck and I'm all about the treasure and treasure is one for any mana I'm really thinking if I put Vraska in the deck at some point I would have a lot of treasures to pay for that one color mana which is not blue black which is green so I think I could splash her in the deck so without actually putting in any basic lands that are green so I don't know what you guys think about that I'm sort of sharing my secrets here uh, I don't want you guys to uh, <laughs> uh, well I mean you can steal it if you want I mean it's you know there's probably someone out there building a blue black treasure deck the way I'm thinking of building a blue black tre uh, treasure deck I know I want to win Exelon game day, but I don't want to find a deck online that someone else build that is guaranteed to like be amazing. Um, I rather try and discover building a deck on my own. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it's like if I'm going to win, I want to try and win it with something I made that, you know, I had no idea in the beginning would work. Like, I want to I wanna build my version of the blue-black pirate treasure deck. I don't want to build some, one the version that's guaranteed to 100% work or 99% win ratio or whatever, or whatever they do for magic. But, uh, yeah, so if I'm going to build a deck, I'm going to build it my way. And I, who knows, I might put something weird in there. Like, I was actually thinking with uh, Dead-Eye Plunderers, um, it is five costs, so I'm thinking I put in, um, the double blue visor of many faces, because that's still in the standard, and that one copies creatures when it enters the battlefield, so that's my equivalent of getting four of these, or, like, eight of these onto the battlefield, without actually having... Well, because it's illegal to have more than four of the same card on in the in the game in your deck. So, if I put Dead Eye Plunderers with Visor Many Faces, Visor Many Faces, I really like. I love clone cards. I love cards that copy other abilities and all that. I love the whole mechanic in that. And there's so many in Magic. And right now, the in Standard Visor Many Faces is that. So I think it would be awesome putting Visor Many Faces because let's face it. I'm a pirate deck. I go up against um, the 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 nine nine vanilla. Where is he, Mr. Jurassic Park himself? If I go up against this guy, the nine nine vanilla, I, like he's a big cost. So instead of putting this guy in my deck to counter, you know, big dinosaurs and all that, I have the visor many faces for four costs. It enters as a copy of the 9-9 vanilla. And look at that, I got a 9-9 creature for only 4 mana with Visor Many Faces. Um, the only thing that's a problem with Visor Many Faces, obviously if it gets countered it wouldn't enter. Um, and also I don't have them, but that dinosaur that has Hexproof, and I know that dinosaur, the big one, the one I think uh, deals damage to things when it enters, and it's Trample, Hexproof, green um that card is going to be a problem in standard i know a lot of, there's going to be people playing dinosaur decks so i have to build the pirate one to the best of my ability so it can battle the slow but huge dinosaur deck uh which could ramp up really fast if you're not too careful and then the vampire deck from my experience um really really fast from like every time I played a vampire deck in the pre-release th they got so many like turn five I'm dealing with lifelink a uh, whole bunch of tokens and all that and I'm like wow vampire decks are really really fast which I'm surprised um like I, I once again my magic experience is like two to four years over the period of uh like six six years because I came in to play Magic for the first time around Dragon Age slash M14 slash Pharos I didn't actually play 
pre-release until Pharos. So, uh, in my opinion, the Vampire deck, you gotta really be careful in the first starting turns. Like, they can wipe you out before you even... <laughs> I think they're really good as well, but I don't really have a lot of Vampire ones, and I kind of put my money on the blue black and you know what I have fun playing the pirates so if I want to win the Exxon game day it's gonna be with the blue black pirates so um, uh, anything else I want to touch on yeah so those ones you watch out the merfolk one I think is the most strongest overall like, I don't mean that as it's the best out of the four, but I just say it's the most even. Yeah, like, the Merfolk, you're guaranteed good things early on, and you got some good things greater on. Like, it's so even deck-wise that, you know, when you're up against one, it's really good in general. Like, so, those are the four big competitions from Ixlon, or... Like, as I like to call it, X Allen. Allen. So, yeah, I think Blue Black with Dead Eyed Plunderers as my main card, um, and having Ravel and Riches, which I still only have the one, and it's Russian, so I'm gonna have to pick up an English one. Um, yeah, my goal is to try and win with the alternate condition for getting 10 tokens by the beginning of your upkeep which by the way I was reading it in the book uh, Ravel and Riches it's um, beginning of the upkeep but I made a mistake in my video, video video when you get the enchantment you don't get treasures it's whenever an opponent's creature dies you get a token so but here's the thing Bl Dead Eye Plunderers gets plus one plus one for each treasure you control and it can create treasure tokens on the fly like I was playing the one time I was playing him or no at the times I was playing against him at this the release day match I was up against him and only with a couple of treasures he was a 9-9 with other artifacts and other things in play and I was like I was up against I was fighting this 9-9 which brings me to the the hero card, which is absolutely amazing, which I didn't realize how amazing it was until I played it, was the Formatic Compass. This card saved me, because I put this, because I got it in my pool, I put this in my deck for uh, the release day. And every good game, I won one game, and lost the rest but every close game and the the two that I won was all thanks to like the two matches because each each game has best two out of three matches I won two so I won the first one and I won the second one with this card which I haven't I haven't done that at all I have never won one and then won the second one right after I always the only other time I've won a game is I placed I won it in free matches. So I lost I won or lost the first one, won or lost the second one, and then the third one I won. That's the only that's the only time I won. So this is my first time I win, and it's all thanks to this card, because this card, um, let me show you. So first off the bat, two cost artifact. Um tap four costs or four and tap or free and tap I keep thinking what the tab symbol is for uh, so free colorless tap search your library for a basic land card reveal it put in your hand and shuffle your library so that's great okay so turn two you get it and then turn free as long as you have a third land by that turn you can start using this to get land that you need say opening hand you had free lands Let's say hypothetically by turn three, you played those lands and you still haven't got any lands. This is such a good card. And I didn't realize how good this card was until I played it in the release day. So I am so glad I have so many of these cards. I think I have four of them. Yeah, I have a place set of them. So when it, okay, so 
seven or more lands at the beginning of your end step. You transform them into the, and you probably already experienced players would know this as some sort of maze or whatever. I kind of remember that card. I think I think the maze was in one of the core sets, um, but I could be mistaken. But anyway, so you tap. Okay, so you can get colorless mana, so that's good. Uh, tap, untap target attacking creature in opponent controls and remove it from combat. Now, I was staring down a 9-9 Dead-Eyed Plunderers. So, this card, for the entire second half of the game, was taking the Dead-Eyed Plunderers every time he went, the opponent I was versus attacked me with Dead-Eyed Plunderers. And so this card saved me. If it wasn't for this card, I would have lost. Um, I would have lost probably both games. Because both games I saw play with this. And both games I was blocking or using it to my advantage really well. So this card is amazing. Now here's the thing where it gets a little bit broken. Because let's say that's early game. So late game you get this. And I'm talking you already got seven lands. Two costs, you put this on the field, at the end of your turn, it flips, and booyah, you got a Spiral Orza. But here's the broken bit, which I am shocked they decided to do this. Um, it is, you see anything about this card that's a little bit odd? Now, if you, if you read up on the story, this is the compass that Veraska... Veraska was sent on a mission to Ixlan to find this artifact or whatever in the golden city of or Orca. Orca. I'm going to call it Orca because um, I can't pronounce it. Um, and so there's only one of this compass in the story. And she got it from Bolas and now she's in Ixlan and then Jace stumble upon that ship and is a you know great stowaway and all that somehow jace gets a hold of that compass and he gets lost or splits up from the pirates or whatever and so he gets separated from the pirates and veraska and he has his compass hence the quote and since he's still trying to figure out things mind wise or whatever he's you know he's not in the full jace so he he probably stumbles upon these spires and then probably the gold city in rivals of Ixland. But the thing is, this is not legendary. I repeat, this artifact is not legendary. And when it flips, when it flips, the land is not legendary. Oh my gosh. Like, I can understand if there's multiple of these, but at the very least, the compass should be... Um, legendary but getting rid of story points altogether and whatnot you have let's say you put four of these in your deck or whatever late game early game okay wouldn't be that great early game um but later in the game you got seven lands so let's say you got eight lands you somehow have four of these in your hand. Let's say you save them. You were playing really well with all your creatures and that over time from drawing you got four of these in your hand. So that turn you place all four of these. Two, four, six, eight. I mean granted that will probably never happen. But the next turn you got tap you got four creatures on the opponent's side that you don't even have to worry about because you can just tap this to make them you know if they if they do decide to attack they get lost so this this is my most this is the card I'm gonna be looking out for um, when I'm doing my deck building because I'm running at least one absolutely in my blue black player deck because it is so like it helped me so much so, and you know what, with other artifacts and treasures, I'm sure my opponent will have a lot of things to worry about, especially with Dead Eye Plunderers on the board, which gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. 
not just treasures, artifacts. And the treasure is an artifact. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to build this deck. Anyways, time for the booster unboxing. Are you ready for this? Well, yeah, these boosters. So I got two boosters. Let's put the promo in the the rare section. Boom, looks beautiful. Very quickly, two packs. Here we go. Um, I didn't even bother moving, getting a play mat for this. It uh, should be simple, should be fast, and as you can tell, audio quality is a lot better than my mass unbox, my part one, because part one I had the mic facing that way uh, for the whole thing, and because of it, when I unwrapped the wrapper, it was really loud. Uh, but now it's gonna be smooth because um, I am talking directly into the mic and this wrapping shouldn't pick up as much so awesome let's pull this Veraska out and if she's not in here I guess that's tough luck who knows I may not get what I want but at the very least I'll get what I need I think uh, Rolling Stones said that Starting off with the Dire Fleet Hoarder, Knight, blah, 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 boom, cobbled wings, here we go, uncommon, common, and the Marauders, okay, I got three of them now, and treasure, put that there, you don't care about the rest, boom, 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 second pack, I uh, just want to thank everyone for watching, and anyone who watched part one and part two, man, you're amazing. Whoever you are, thank you. Okay, here we go. Pack two. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit hungover after all this um, boxing and opening of these cards. Um, here we go. Come on, second last chance. Nebraska, here we go, there we go, boom, 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 Brangard, ah, oh, man, well, that's great, boom, Vanguard, okay, time for this special thing. I don't think I'm going to get anything good out of this. I, I have no idea what's in it. Is it going to be just like the buy box? I don't think so. I don't Because I think the buy box had a lot of rares. I don't think this has a lot. Um, I don't even think it's foiled. I mean, there might be one random foil, but... Okay, what do we got here? Oh, a rare on top. What is this? Um, Dragon Scum <laughs> Summit. Yay. Um, what is this? Apocalypse Demon? I've never seen this card before. Um, Hour of Devastation. Six costs, flying, and power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. At the beginning of your upkeep, tap uh, unless you sacrifice another creature. Oh my gosh. That would be great in a mill deck. Uh, ooh, 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 foil. Aww. Disallow. Uh, I was I was I was like okay I saw blue what's the chance of it being a foil Jace? Cause I uh, tell you the truth I would probably trade it in for a Veraska. I'm that I'm that desperate. I'm willing to trade a foil. Um, oh man! Oh, it's that uh, special artist land. Awesome because there was I think a blue and green one I got and now I got a mountain. That looks beautiful. That is going in my experimental um, red-green legacy deck. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm pretty sure this is a really good foil to get rare-wise because I think this rare is good. From what I remember hearing about, uh, was it Keladesh? No, I think that's Aoife Revolt. Um counter target spell um activate ability or triggered ability so that's you know i might run that in my blue black deck because uh you know triggered ability 
there's a lot of trigger abilities in uh in this stuff so yeah dragon skull summit not really excited but yeah that mountain wow i i'm so glad uh i'm so glad i played and got that free booster so um i think i think you were only supposed to get that booster if you placed in the top eight or whatever but there wasn't a lot of people who played so uh as a result i think we all got that booster um I'm sure someone else probably got a mythic or whatever, but you know what? I'm happy with what I got. I just want to say overall, I think Ixalan, you know what? In the current standard block, this is definitely my favorite set. Um, I'm just thinking back, but my favorite sets from what I've experienced is, uh, my favorite one is the Scars of Meridian block. I love that block. In his strat, I think block is the second. Um, you know what? Even though it's not, this set is no so far nowhere near as amazing as Innistrad or Scars of Meridian. Um, the original Innistrad <laughs> block, not the newer one. Um, I gotta say, this is probably my this is shaping up to be my third favorite block of Magic. So. Rivals of Ixlan, uh, or Rivals of Ix Allen, please don't be disappointing. I have some theories that we're going to be seeing, and uh, I think they're going to do, they're going to bring back the lottery card just for the Rivals, and the lottery card, there's only going to be like five, five or six of them, and I think they're going to be the major lands for that set. Like, I'm thinking, because I was reading the, like, the print and the quotes and all that, and I was just sort of researching um, what cards say and what they mention. Like, for example, they mention in, well, Dragon, Dragon Skull Summit, this is the obvious one, the quote, when the Planeswalker Agarath called Dinosaurs Dragons the name stuck in certain pirate circles, Everyone knows he's in the next set as a planeswalker. You don't you don't need to Yeah. So that that is the most easiest one to theorize about. But there's other ones where I'm thinking um there was a treasure card that mentioned there's a pirate city. And you know what? I think the pirate city and the lost city that you're looking for um, Orca, and then there's a couple more lands, uh, name-wise and places, that I think they're gonna be in the next set as either, um, rares, mythics, or the lottery card. And if not, maybe the next set will only have one lottery card, and that is the, the, the golden city that they're looking for. How amazing would that be? Because there wouldn't be 50 million or 20 or 30 lottery cards. It's just one. There's just one lottery card to get. So if you pull the lottery card, you're guaranteed to get that lottery card. I think Rivals of Ixlan will at the very least have that one. And if it's not a lottery card, there will be no lottery for the second one. And I think um, Orca, the Lost City or whatever, will just be a mythic legendary land. But that's a little boring. I think it would be exciting to see what happens to Magic and Gathering if and the fate of the set if the second block only had one lottery card and it was at the very least and have it the Orca with a Z. So until next time. Oh did I just oh yeah. I just uh, I just realized I buried the hoopla. River hoopla. River hoopoo. Will you ever forgive me for piling a whole bunch of uh, commons and uncommons on you? And he's like, no, I will never forgive you. Well, I didn't get a Varesk, a River Hoopoo, but at least I got you. Anyways, I want all of you to have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this. Have a nice whatever. Thanks again for watching. I have no idea if this is in focus or not. Woo! Focus, unfocus. Anyways, 
Check out my other stuff if you want. Have a nice day or night or whatever time you watch this. Thanks again for watching. Um, all that jazz. Check out my other stuff if you want. Like this video if you want. Subscribe if you want. It's entirely up to you. I'm probably turning off all of my viewers at this point by doing this weird focus thing. So, um, yeah. Have a fun um, couple of weeks of Standard and Modern and prepare for game day whenever that is at your local shop. So, thanks again for watching. It means a lot to me.